Well, I'm just so addictive. I was like, I just end up. I kind of go through phases with it. Um, yeah, so I'll play it like religiously and then just not play it for like a couple of years. Yeah. Mm. I was yeah my my Ipswich save I've had I'd, on FM twenty I'd had for four years and then because I've changed the laptop I had to say uh, goodbye to my save. Do you mean do you mean four you did four seasons? No, no, I I played that you save played it for four, four years. years. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I took I took Ipswich. Uh, I I joined them, promoted out of League One straight away, promoted out of the Championship straight away, back to back top ten finishes in the Premier League, qualified for Europe the next year, won the Conference League, and then I was in the following season where I was playing in the Europa League, and I think I was in the top four after like the first. I was in a title race after like the first thirteen games of the season. Or something. Yeah, the, like, oh. Oh, the the longest I've done is I've got into an eighth season. That's the longest I've got. But I did like I was at Blues, then Norwich, then Liverpool, and it was just eventually I was like I need to just sack this off. I'm just playing yeah. too much. Like, and then Liverpool, so <laughs> Liverpool, Blues and Norwich were brilliant. Liverpool did not go. Oh, well. I remember so, you telling us about your old Liverpool save. That was yeah, just a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that that'd be funny to get on the podcast as well. Hello, I'm Daniel Sketchley. And I'm Callum Byrne. We've been friends for more than 10 years, sharing lifelong passions such as film and music. But most importantly, football, through the ups and the downs, the celebration and the heartbreak. However, he's a blue nose. And he's a villain. This is the Second City Podcast. Good evening, Dan. Welcome back to the Second City Podcast. Hello, brother. Are you all good? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I mean, it's an exciting day, isn't it? Because I, I said to you I was road testing my new MacBook, so... Yes. Um, you s- about seven or eight years on the old one, finally plumped yeah. for a new one. So um, Yeah, I got a new one last year, and I had to use my old one again just to get some stuff off it the other day, and I don't know how I used it. Like, okay. it's brilliant, obviously. It lasted for years, but, like, it was just completely ancient. Like, I just don't know how I was still <laughs> using it as recently as well. 18 months ago but i was also telling you i uh bought a new phone before i went on holiday a few months ago went for a run on friday tripped over smashed the phone lovely but you're Sorry. okay though that's more important i'm okay phone. thank you yeah i'm okay although i did textures to let you know i'd yeah. uh <laughs> taken on a bit of a bad boy look for a few days yeah. it's, it's all gone now but i had some like bruises on my face and uh, on the Bristol Road, probably very funny for anyone driving past. There's quite a lot of cars about. Just took a took a tumble on a yeah the Bristol Road south. I'm sure, everyone driving past had a good laugh. But that Hap- happens to the best of us. It does, yes. Even us athletes. Um, but yeah, um, lots of football to talk about this week. Another another double game week for both of us. It's pretty. The games just come thick and fast, fast, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we're playing midweek again next week, which we'll get into later. But yeah, it's literally non-stop at the minute. So yeah. it always is this period, like with international breaks and stuff. So before we dive into the games, it's yes, time that's for just the how it's like. This shirt's a bit baggy on me. Yeah, I'm just trying. Yeah. To... <laughs> yeah. Shall we start with you this week? Yeah, this is we've. This is one of the modern ones that I have. Um, I actually have two of this shirt. Um, yeah. And I'll explain why. So this is our, for everyone who's listening on audio, this is the Villa 2021-2022 season home shirt. So this would have been the Dean Smith and Stephen Gerrard season. Um, One of my favourites of the modern era. I love this shirt. I think it's just, I, I don't know, it's just something about it. I just really, really like it. The stripes, the badge is the silicone rubberized badge. It's really, really nice. I have nice. two of this shirt because I got it for Christmas that year, which was the replica. And this is the pro version, which I managed to pick up for a tenner the other day, about two weeks ago. Where did you get where did you get that? A website called Select Shirts. Mm-hmm. And they had a couple of villa shirts, uh, both pro and replicas, just in a sale. And so I actually sized up for this one. So this is a large and normally a medium, but because it's the pro version, it's like a real skinny tight fit. So it fits nice it's really really nice and it's probably the comfiest shirt football shirt i've ever owned it is so nice not bad for a tenner not bad for a no. tenner it just means that very because good. because i know that kappa and the transfers have got to be very careful keep it in good name. yeah uh any particular memories from that season it'll be not 
good. There's good memories. Was it the? Was it the? Uh, you didn't beat Liverpool seven two that year. Was it no, year that's the season before. So, ah, right. so I mean, the good memories in this shirt. There weren't probably that many. No, um, not the Gerrard era. It was a pretty bad yeah, era. <laughs> um, I mean, this season just reminds me of Dean Smith getting sacked, which was really sad. But we didn't yeah. wear this shirt for his last game, so. Um, probably right. Gerard's first game was a good memory when we beat Brighton 2-0 um, with two late goals. Ollie Watkins scored. Um, there's, yeah, Jacob, it's probably the it's the Jacob Ramsey breakout season shirt, really. It's the year he really cemented himself in our starting eleven. so probably that. Fair enough, fair enough. Very we good. won't talk um, about the, the, the failure of the Holy Trinity <laughs> of the Jack Grealish <laughs> Holy know. Trinity of Bailey, Wendy and Ings. No, um, yeah, that hasn't exactly worked out, has it? No, in fact, uh, well, I remember Grealish... when we, we announced this show, we had Grealish in this shirt. So... Yeah, I was going to say, he left for that, so he left in that year, didn't he? He didn't, yeah. he didn't stick around for any of that. Gosh, um, have a guess then, what do you think I'm wearing? What year? I I recognise this shirt. Um, yep. I'm trying to think. It's oh, I I think it's 19... 2019-2020 alternate. Or the Bang on, kit. yeah. Uh, so you're bang on with the year, but not really an alternate. This is technically the away kit. Oh, is that the away um, kit? This is so for anyone just listening on audio. This is the black um, Adidas kit with like the white stripes on the shoulders, uh, Boyle Sports, and it's got like the sort of I don't know. It probably doesn't show on this, but it's the pattern on the. It's the template of the, the Germany. It's the old Germany one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the work, Italian ninety um, sort of pattern on it. Um, but yeah, this is our away kit, but this is one of the weird ones where we only wore it like a few times. Uh, and we kept wearing a modified version of the yellow away kit from the previous season, with just with the Boyle Sports sponsor put on instead. We just kept wearing that for some reason. Uh, it later came out, the big rumour is, so we still had um, the previous ownership there at the time. And I don't know if there's... I haven't actually looked into this too much, to be fair, but the big rumour is that... Um, I think we lost our first game in it or something in the black kit. In fact, this kit yeah, is the this rings so Drew Billingham played its very first game in this kit. We lost to Portsmouth 3 0. We played all the kids in the League Cup. Drew Bellingham made his debut, his professional debut. Um, and apparently, the Chinese ownership, uh, apparently in China, uh, it's considered bad. The colour black is considered bad luck. Um, or in Hong Kong, maybe. And so they. After that, they apparently said we only we could only wear it unless we like had to. Apparently, <laughs> so we wore it a couple more times, but that's the rumor. Um, but it's kind of a shame because I do like I do like it quite a bit actually. We don't have many black away kits over the years. Like we have we'll have one every few years, but I never actually owned any of them. I think it's maybe the only black one I've got. Um, but yeah, Jude Bellingham's breakthrough season, and we, uh, we we had a really great away game. The season kind of tailed off massively. Like we started kind of well under Pep Patet, and then. Uh, got when this was the season we went into like lockdown and stuff, and everything really tailed off. But we had a really fantastic game in this kit. We beat Bristol City away 3 1. Uh, it was live on Sky on a Friday night, and we went 1 0 down in like the first minute, but we turned it around. And Jukovic scored. I don't know if you remember it, I, I obviously was raving about it at the time. Lee Camp of all people hit like a long ball, and Jukovic has like let it bounce and he sort of used his knee to turn his man and bring the ball with him and then he's chipped the keeper and it was like the third goal just sealed the win <laughs> fantastic Scott Hogan scored I think Vyman Andreas Vyman former Villa player scored a known yeah. goal as well so that was a fa- like one of my fa- like, I wish I was at that game it's a brilliant game to watch um and it was just as the season looked like it was going to go into a really good place this was in like sort of February March time just before Covid actually and then after lockdown, I don't think we won another game. This might have been actually our last or penultimate win of the season, actually. Um, so it really tailed off. But I do like the kit. So, yeah, 2019-20 away. It's very, it's very clean. Yes, it's solid. Um, Adidas, I, I generally, Adidas are my favourite kit makers that we've had. I think I liked a lot of their kits. They are one of the best around at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Should we jump into the actual matches that happened this week then? Yeah, absolutely. Um, loads to get through, so. Yeah, we have, yeah. Um, so, no time to rest. Did you want to start with, do you want to go chronologically, or did you want to start with Villa in Europe? Or... Yeah, I think we'll go chronologically. We'll talk about yeah, cool. uh, the Preston game. Yeah, so this was, it feels like ages ago now, so yeah. nearly a week ago this game was. 
Um, so yeah, Blues played Preston away last Tuesday, and Preston were and still are top, I believe, at the top of the league. And so it's always going to be a tough game. We'd obviously dropped a few points in the games before that, lost to Watford and drew to Millwall and so on. Um, but we actually played really well. It was a really good performance. So it was a shame that we ended up losing 2-1. But I think that shows Preston, even when they didn't play that well, they were able to nick a win against us. Um, first half was really not great, pretty dead game, not really anything of impact. Then in the first minute of the second half, I think it was, we go 1-0 up. Koji Mayashi with a brilliant sort of um, assist for Jay Stansfield. He brilliantly puts his... Like, I mean, the guy was on him. Yeah, he, I mean, he put him on the floor. He couldn't... He, you know, absolutely rinsed him. And it's a brilliant finish. Jay Stansfield was starting as, like, the number nine as well. And Mayashi was playing just behind him. And it's a brilliant goal. 1-0 up. Fantastic. Uh, Tom Wagner was in the away end, the new owner, which I thought was really cool. Um... And then a few minutes later, we score a, like a bizarre own goal from a corner. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> yeah. From a corner. Christian Bielik as well, someone who's so reliable. It's really weird because it's straight after our goal as well. It's about four minutes later. And the corner goes in and Bielik and Long just both jump for it. There's not a Preston man near them. And, and I think Bielik just nods it into his own net. Absolutely bizarre. And then not long after that, Preston went 2-1 up. Uh, really gets beaten. It's near post. And the ball gets slotted between his legs from close range. But I've been I was kind of critical of Ruddy last week a little bit. Um so and he didn't cover himself in glory there. But uh Sunjic kind of got done in the build up as well, and Deon Sanderson. So I don't think it could be purely labelled on Ruddy. Um but the weird thing is we played really well for a lot of that game. I don't really know how we lost. And even when we it was 1-1 one, one, or even at 2-1, we always looked like we could maybe get back into it. Um, I think the biggest difference is, so we've had a few, I mentioned last week, we've had a few injuries and suspensions yeah. lately. And I think we've got good, we've got a good squad now. It's the best squad we've had in quite a while. But for example, we had, so Cody Dramer, who we've had come in from Leeds, uh, right back on loan. And we had Oliver Burr, Oli Burr, Oliver Burr. Um, yeah. Uh, on the right wing and then Lee Buchanan was out as well so we had Longello at left back so a few players filling in I actually thought Longello did all right I think I think he gets a bit unfairly criticised sometimes but I'm thinking if we don't have like Dramer and Burke did not have good (laughs) games really at all they're both quite poor to be honest and I'm thinking if that's Led and Dembele we're (laughs) like we're winning that game by half time and probably getting something out of it at least a draw so I thought that really showed but We'll get more into them guys later when we go on to the <laughs> second game because we got obviously we played again on the Friday night, so we had a few more developments there. Um, but it, even though we lost, it was really encouraging. John Eustace seemed a bit baffled as to how we didn't win, um, or at least get a draw. So I was quite positive afterwards, I must say. Um, so we'll talk about the Europa Conference League, yeah. um, because let's get it out of the way. I don't it was really a disaster. Know. It was an absolute. It was. Disaster. It was a complete and utter disaster, Dan. I've watched. Uh, let me let me get this right. I've watched two games this season in a bar or a pub because obviously, <laughs> we, as, we, as we mentioned, yeah. as we mentioned yeah, in our um, very first episode. Yeah. yeah, as we mentioned last week as well, is that because of the early kickoff, and um, I was commuting that day. I didn't have time yes. to get yeah, home yeah. to watch it, so I found an Irish bar literally five minutes from the office. And where we went in, and every time we ordered a drink at the bar, Legia of Warsaw <laughs> scored a bloody goal. Nice. <laughs> it was nice. a disaster. The only other game I went to bar for was, of course, the Newcastle game. So never again. Yeah. Um, um, defensive disaster, it sounded like. It just all over the place. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't great. Um, we made a lot, a lot more changes than I thought we were going to make. I really didn't think we'd make that many changes, um, but we did. Um, and you know, disjointed teams can make disjointed performances. You know, you know, the two standout poor performers really were Callum Chambers and Clement Longley. But I'm not going to beat on them really because neither of them have played a, t- a minute of football this season, and then they've just been thrown in right at the deep end to probably the toughest away game 
Oh, the Bosnia one could be quite tough, but I, I think that's the toughest on paper. What the like, like it was, or... yeah, it's like the tough, the toughest away, probably the toughest tie in the group away from home. You know, I, it was so I, I, I do feel for them in that regard, and you know, okay, Calm Chambers is a good player in there. Whether we found the right position for him, I don't really know, but I like having him around because he's that. There's much worse players we could have than Callum Chambers. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we're just very disjointed. We, we conceded almost immediately. Um. But we got back in the game. We scored about three minutes later. So you know, it's like okay, right. We've had the little blip. The trend of conceding early in a half has happened again. But we're back in the game. We're one-one. We've got eighty-two minutes to win the game. Then we concede another poor goal. Get back in the game again. Luca Dean scores an absolute in- fantastic goal. And we got to half time 2 2. And I was like, yeah, you know what? We'll take, you know, it's been a bit scrappy. It's been a bit messy. The atmosphere is intense. The, the Legion Warsaw fans were insane. They were so oh, good. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I think I really enjoyed the, the game at Villa Park because I think they're going to, the away s- support they're going to bring is going to be incredible. I think. Um, yeah, I don't know if you saw, sure. Dan, that before the game, they had a TIFO. Uh, on their like cop end, which said "Welcome to the jungle," and it had this giant gorilla on it. Oh no, it's <laughs> yeah. that's cool. It's incre- <laughs> that's cool. it just incredible. It was like it's brilliant. something European fans just do well on the continent. Yeah. They just do stuff like that well. And um, but yeah, we we were just we just didn't yeah, we just we were just very lethargic. We looked leggy, but it was a bit early in the season to be leggy. And oh, hundred percent. Um, you know we've. We've given the ball away. They've literally just walked down the other end and and popped it in the back of the net. And you know, you can't you can't concede. You know, you concede three goals away from home. It's going to be very difficult to get something out of it. And oh, 100%. Um, which is a do you shame, think really. it was? Do you think it was complacency then in general? Yeah, I think so. I think it was a really big wake up call to the club, the players. You know, Emery, you know, maybe got a few things wrong, maybe made a t- few too many changes. He met, he put his hands up and said, look, I made some mistakes. We're not going to beat, beat, beat him up about it because he's worked absolute miracles in the last yeah. 11, 10, uh, 11 months. And he um, does know what he's doing in uh, Europe as well. Yeah. Uh, and it'll be I a case of he put some trust in a few players and they've maybe let him down. Or, you know, it, it could well be a case we just underestimated the opposition which i don't think we'll do again um sure. so it is what it is um it may um it may like inadvertently make the group more exciting as well though now like if you'd obviously this is very much sil- silver yeah. linings but if you'd like won the first it's like you know like england in qualifying for the euros yeah. or something they always they always win the first few games and it's mm. just an absolute breeze from there there's no yeah. stakes or anything now you've kind of got to perform the next few games yeah. Well, I was like thinking this morning as well. Well, I was thinking this morning, the next game we've got is the Bosnian team at home, mm. which are theoretically the weakest team on paper. And that game at Villa Park is the first one. Could be a, the atmosphere. If we'd have won, the, the atmosphere could be a bit flat. Now we've got to go and win. We have yeah, to exactly. win. And so I think that's good. For That's going to be a really good atmosphere now at Villa Park uh, in a couple of weeks. So, but yeah, the, the only... Maybe the other benefit, I guess, is AZ Altmar lost as well. So True. one of the other favourites to qualify from the group. So I, this group is wide open. Mm. Um, and it also shows that when we play the Bosnian team as well, um, that we're going to have to be on it. We can't be complacent again. So um, it's a good it's a good learning experience, a good wake-up call. Um and you know, some sometimes you need to have these sort of bad shock results to get better. You know, hundred percent. And of course, I hope this doesn't happen. But sometimes uh, slow starts do not indicate um, where you're going. As we, I mean, Argentina lost to Saudi Arabia at the World Cup last year, and then yeah, went on to win the whole damn thing. So that, that's what I said in my not to, tweeted not to after the game, you. saying that. Oh, did you actually? But, oh, did you actually? Yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. But, well, I said, I said the only, I think the only consolation from tonight is that Emmy Martinez lost the opening game of the World Cup okay, to Saudi yeah. Arabia. I, 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 genuinely didn't see, <laughs> I did not see you say that. My bad. I didn't even see that. Um, so yeah, but as you say, it sets the rest of the group up 
pretty and also you're going to be like the um i even though you've got some other big teams in that group you're going to be like the one they want to be you know yeah like the english team right like, yeah yeah the, probably the kind of got the the big names and stuff um you must still be confident you'll get out of the group yeah, at the moment, yeah. yeah. I did think as well, like, obviously West Ham winning it last year has arguably put quite a lot of pressure on us to win it this year mm. because yeah. of, people would consider us at the very least a similar sort of level team to West Ham. Oh, I mean, I mean, you are oh, 100%, yeah. And so I think people would look at it and go, well, if West Ham can win it, why shouldn't Villa go on and win it? So I guess that's a bit to our detriment that there's now a bit of pressure that there might not otherwise have been. But hey, we... 12 months ago when we couldn't win a game for love and money I've taken it so absolutely and I was gonna say um because obviously it's a bit of a trend that you're away we we're saying last week that your home form has been really really good under Emery and re- this season mm-hmm. I was gonna say your away form maybe not so convincing but we can get onto that later because yeah. you uh had another away game at the weekend <laughs> but more of that later we've got to talk about the Friday night game we have yes so Villa were on Thursday and then we were back in action again on Friday so uh, we were on Sky again but we were uh, we were at home so I went um, and went QPR so QPR uh, so we, we played QPR in the Friday night game almost exactly a year ago I might have said this I think I might have said this last week yeah but we beat them 2-0 and it was absolutely like rocking like the place was absolutely rocking and uh, I was really looking forward to the game like I just Kind of, it'd been a long week and stuff, and I was like, I'm looking forward to just going, you know, Friday night, go to the game. I love the Friday night games. Quite a few of my family were going, like, you know, under the lights. It's just something different about. It. I don't know what it is. Yeah. A Friday night game. There's something I, different. I, I about would it. agree with you. Like the yeah. Friday night game. I think it's because maybe it's like the start of the weekend. Yeah, exactly. You can have, it, it doesn't matter if you have a few too many drinks because it's yeah. the weekend and. A, a win there's... under the lights just sets sets up the weekend oh, for you. Oh, it's exactly it. Um, and so it was all a bit underwhelming in the end because we played. I know we lost against Preston, but we played so well. QPR are pretty poor. They're not. They're not very good. Um, and my point was that when we beat QPR under the lights a year ago, they were top, and now they're like in the bottom five or six. Like they're really not very good at all. Um, but the game ended nil nil, and they just they just worked us out completely. They're a very physical team. And did everything they kind of could to stop us playing, not in like a dirty way or anything. That's you know is fair enough. Um, and they had chances of their own. Uh, Rudy, who I obviously have criticised a bit, he made some huge saves. He made a really good save right at the end. I can't remember who was it got Lyndon the header, Dykes, but wasn't it? It might have been yeah. Albert Adoma put a cross in, and Lyndon, Lyndon Dykes gets his head to it, and Rudy gets down lows a proper like kind of save like Ben Foster would make all the time when he was at Blues. Um. So there was a few chances like that. QPR probably like definitely had the match of us, certainly in the second half. Um, but we had chances of our own as well. Uh, QPR very nearly scored an own goal at one point. The ball sort of clipped off one of their defence. A cross came in. I think it was um, Buchanan put a cross in. And one of their players, it's hit him and it's about it's gone over the keeper and it's going to go over the line. And one of their centre-backs has done like an unbelievable like overhead kick to clear it off the line. And it's literally one of those like, it didn't go over, but it's one of them proper, like, if VAR could see it, it would literally be, like, half the ball's over the line and half isn't. Um, so we had that great chance, and then we had a brilliant chance in the second half where Miyashi again has threaded in Hogan into a one-on-one, and he's just snatched at it completely. Like, he just... He, he just... Like, Hogan, he just frustrates me so much, and I know <laughs> this... He frustrates so many people, and I know you know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. When he's on it, like there's times when he'll go through periods where he can't miss that. He he he'll just he'll score every time, but then he'll then go through months where he just it, it, it's a perfect yeah. chance for him. That's his game. It's a perfect one on one. Begovic, who's uh, I didn't even realize plays for QPR now, had Is a really he? good game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's their keeper now. He had a really good game, and he did, to be fair, come out and close him down well, get down low. It's a good save, but. Frustrating funny. in that sense, you know, that's your one big chance and yeah. and he's not taking it. It's funny, it's, you just remind me there, but with Hogan, um, back in our first season in the championship, we just signed Scott Hogan and I did work experience at the Birmingham Mail and they did an yeah. interview with the then CEO, Keith Wyness. And uh, so I was doing the 
writing it up doing the transcript for it and there was a question in there i can't remember what the question was but he keith was saying oh i love this and i love that and i was like i love watching scott hogan score goals and i remember at the time writing it going he hasn't scored for us yet <laughs> what are you talking about no. <laughs> like, um, like he only scored one yeah. goal in that half a season that was after the interview oh, it, it's like, oh. it, it, it's like he's in his last i'm pretty sure he's in his last contracted year with us now and he probably so he probably won't be here next year and by the end of the season, he'll have been with us for four and a half seasons, which is mental. Um, in fact, he, he uh, one of his, his very first season would have been yeah. uh, the season this kit was on. Been the um, yeah, yeah, when he was on loan from Villa. And it's frustrating because for a player who's had great moments and has scored great goals and done great things, he will, he won't go down as a great blue striker. He won't be up there with, even in our time, he will not be nowhere near like Jukovic or <laughs> Shea Adams, yeah, Duke, or Forsell. And and others, he just won't be in that league, which is a shame because he he could he should be if you know what I mean. He has the ability. Um, so yeah, a bit of a damp squib. Performance was not particularly good. People seemed quite frustrated by it at the end. Couple of individual performances not great again. Bakuna had a really uh, just a really off game in particular. I thought he struggled in in centre mid. We weirdly seemed to miss Sunjic. I never thought I'd say that. We really missed his intensity in the midfield. But I um. Still not convinced by Oli Burke. He kind of just he's got yeah. pace and he's a big strong guy, but he clear like someone said this to me, and it's so true. He just doesn't his final ball is really not good. And it's like he doesn't have the the like it sounds really harsh, but it's like he just doesn't have a footballing brain, if you know what I mean. Like he just doesn't know what pass to pick. He had a perfect chance to thread in. I think it was Bakuna on his left in the box, and he just didn't see it. And instead he's gone right for a far less promising chance. Um, when it was, you know, if that's Miyoshi on the ball, he's going left, you know, every time. Um, so that's frustrating. But I got to say, Cody Dreamer, who I criticised for his performance in the Preston game, he was so much better. I, I thought they'd drop him. I thought they'd put Emmanuel Iwu in. But Cody Dreamer had a much better game. He looked far more solid. His um, positional play was much better. His attacking play, I thought, was better. Um so yeah, he does, he deserves a lot of credit for that, and Eustace deserves a lot of credit for sticking with him as well. So that's something I really admire. On the whole, it was all a bit underwhelming, but I do have to give a lot of props to the actual effort that is going into the match day experience again. And I think the reason why it maybe felt like a damp squib and why the Friday night thing felt so special again was. Like I really, I just, I really appreciate things like this. Like you go, we walk up to the ground now, and the outside of the ground looks fantastic. The big LED badge and the screens either side of it on the outside of the stadium looks fantastic. At kick off, the atmosphere was really good, and like you had the, they're doing this at the home games now. The players walk out, and people might think it's a bit tacky and a bit Americanized, <laughs> but I, I, I actually really like it. The players come out and like the flame, they've got the flamethrower things going off. We then, we do that, yeah. I, I like I I've got a lot of time for it. Make it an event, make it exciting, and then we have like a wave of fireworks go off, and then another wave, and then you know not a couple of little poxy fireworks. It was like proper, real effort gone into it. Um, I'm pretty sure Tom Wagner was there again, probably because the game was on Sky, but even so, he's there nonetheless. Um, so it all felt like just a big okay, you know, big occasion in front of the you know, in front of the country live on Sky. So a little disappointing that we didn't make more of it, but I do think it's worth mentioning that as a fan, I do really appreciate that. And I'm glad that they're finally putting some effort into it. So yeah, on to the next one. I think you'll really appreciate it when the winter months hit as well, because if you're near this, yeah. you feel the heat coming <laughs> yeah. off. Them. And so when those That's December it. days are there, just cold nights in true. December and January, you'll be there going, the place. Oh, so true. Yeah, it's kind of annoying that the whole season takes place in the chilly months, more or less. <laughs> Oh. Um, but you were then back in action on Sunday and you had a slightly better time of things on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So we played Chelsea uh, yesterday um, and it was a much needed away win, much needed, mm. especially after the disappointment that had happened in the midweek. All of a sudden you're looking at the Chelsea game going, oh my God, this is where Chelsea start. They'll pick up some points and score some goals possibly is against us. Um, and obviously people were worried. Or maybe not worried, but concerned, I think mm-hmm. it's fair. Um but no, no, we were we were we're not at our best at the moment, but we're getting better every week, I think, yeah. near enough. Even if the results aren't there, 
in every match. I th- I think we're going to be a team that really starts to build some momentum. And we were a bit like that when Emery joined us last year. We we did hit the ground running in his first couple of games, but then we had a little blip. But when we got going, we were sort of in, imperious, really. Um, but no, s- defensively, we, we were brilliant, really. I was really impressed. Um, Ezri Konzo, who'd had a really tough night in Warsaw, was fantastic. Bubakar Kamara, who's not really started the season very well at all, um, was looking like he was back to his best as well. Um, there was just a lot of good performances across the board. Emmy Martinez was man of the match. I mean, I, God... God help us the day we lose that man in the, in the 26. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. he, you know, he's the best goalkeeper we've ever had. Wow. Um, Bloody I, I, well, World Cup winning keeper. Yeah, Another yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's outrageous to say he's the best goalkeeper we've ever had. It's, no, no, no. Um, we've had, we have had some good goalkeepers a lot before, before my time, really. I mean, a lot of people hold uh, Bosnich. N- Nyland. Um, <laughs> Good no, yeah. I, I, I Jed Steer, Jed Steer, <laughs> Enkelman, oh, yeah, top three, Enkelman, yeah. Martinez, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, resolute, very, very happy. Um, really, really happy for Ollie Watkins. I love Ollie Watkins to bits. So he's been getting a few pelters online because he hasn't scored a Premier League goal. Um. I don't know. Uh, he's a player that I'll always defend and I'll always stand by. And so him to score was and it for it to be the winner as well was fantastic. It was a really it was it, it was a brilliant finish. Absolutely fantastic yeah. finish. Almost like a classic Ollie Watkins like moment of where he had the shot and it was blocked, and the people going, ah, and then he just buried it the next literally. He didn't even think, just instinctive number nine play where the ball just fell back to him and he just booted it pinpoint accurate accurate into the back of the net yeah. um and you could see the relief for him and 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 the fans and so uh absolutely chuffed to bits for him and did uh chelsea have a man sent off before that they did they did i don't know have you seen it or not i haven't seen it no no so for me it's a red card 100 um Fair enough. so as you haven't seen it. So it's on the near side touchline. Um, Zaniolo's just nipped the ball around to Luca Dean. Uh, Gusto went to challenge Zaniolo and then has just jumped into the challenge with Luca Dean. Um, right. Luca Dean's got, screamed right down the microphone because there's a pitch side microphone there, like so loud that it comes through your speakers. Oh. Um, but it's what was it? It definitely sounded like he's been hurt, scream rather than a. He dive sort of scream. Does that kind of make sense? Um, yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Um, and the referee's just giving him a yellow card. And then as soon as you start to see the replays, I was there going, I think that's a red card. And I was pretty sure was, that's a red card. And then they delayed the game. The and Jared Gillett's gone over to the the VAR and um he's gone and changed his mind and turned it into a red. Um, for me, it's a red card, and. If it had gone, if it was the other way, so let's say it was Luca Dean on Gusto, I don't think we we would be having too many complaints about it being a red card. Um, uh, some people will disagree inevitably, but for me, it was a, it was a red card. Um, Do you think you win that game without the sending off? I think so. We were Chelsea had chances. I think we were the better team. If there was a team that was probably going to go on and win it, it was us because, I mean. I'm glad I'm not you a Chelsea did. fan anyway, Dan. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm let's... glad I'm not a Chelsea fan. But honestly, I don't think I could watch a season of them playing like they are at the moment. It would uh, drive what... me insane. We touched on it last week. What have like what are they doing? What have they done? They've like they like we said last week, they won the Champions League a couple of years ago. And to be two fair, they were a little ago. bit lucky to win it. Yeah, two years ago. They were a little bit lucky to win it, to be fair. But like you look at that team, we looked at it today. Uh you had like Jorginho, Kante, Mason Mount was like the biggest young English player in the country. You've just like they're all gone. It's like crazy. Yeah. Like this crux of a brilliant team. I understand things have to change, but I I look at that team and I just I can't believe they've spent all that money on that team. Yeah, it's and like you spend all this money on Enzo Fernandez, apparent apparently the next big thing, and you don't even play him in his right position. 
Like yeah. he looks like he's playing as like a number eight. Uh, is Sam Gallagher still the captain? Not Sam Gallagher. Gallagher, Gallagher. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sam Gallagher, former Blues, <laughs> lethal Blues striker <laughs> under um, Steve Cottrell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, Connor Gallagher. Um, uh, yeah, Connor Gallagher. Yeah. Is he still the captain? That's yeah, absolutely he, he is, yeah. bizarre to me. I, for me, he's not captain material from what I see. I just, uh, Mudrick is, he's, Mudrick is clearly not a bad, he must have something. Yeah. And and it, I don't think it, it was his like worst just doing game. everything wrong with him. It wasn't his yeah. worst game. He put a couple of good crosses in and he's got some pace. Mm-hmm. But my God. I'd like I, for eighty million. I'd expect a bit more. Really. Completely, it's a good job. Sterling is like playing better, and yeah. like he's still not like there yet, in my opinion. But it's a good job he's picked up. Cole Palmer um, but looked still, good as well. He was good when he came on for them. He caused us a few a few issues. Um, true, but I mean half their team now. I genuinely haven't heard. <laughs> no, uh, they're all like yeah. I don't know who a lot of them are. Or I've had to try and catch up with it. Um, yeah, absolutely bizarre. Really bizarre. So there for the taking, and fair enough, you went there and won. Yeah, um, I saw I saw a great stat. I put it in our group chat the other day, Dan. I don't know if you saw. In the last, in Chelsea's last this, eight, yeah. eighteen Premier League games, they've picked up less wins than Leicester City's last yeah. eighteen Premier League games, and they're not in the league. Anymore. Leicester aren't in the league anymore. It's frightening. It's like they are like re- this start of the season is like relegation form. It's uh, like. We've started seasons where we've got relegated better than they've started this season. Um, yeah, but you know what? They've had everything. You they know, have. they've, they've had, had everything. everything. So I'm they've not crying. Everything, and they've it's always everything. nice when those bigger clubs have these seasons where they're. Rubbish. Yeah, um, it's I'm not crying for them. I can imagine for a, like if you're a fan and you go and that's. It, I can imagine you have every right to be annoyed, but yeah, time for someone else to fill the gap. <laughs> Um, yeah. Oh, the other good thing as well is Jacob Ramsey's back from injury as well. Came on against cool. Lugia Warsaw and then came on again and was pretty decent against Chelsea. So, um, nice. good signs. Hopefully, we see Alex Moreno back this week. Fingers crossed. Cool. A um, little, little bit of housekeeping as well. A few points I would like to make. I don't know if you've got any, Dan. Um, oh, not too much, not too much. I like this housekeeping section. It's going to be like a nice little ranty section about things that, <laughs> sure. things that aren't, aren't going where they, the way they should be. Um, well, this one's not a rant. Uh, our former CEO, Christian Perslow, who left the club in the summer because uh, he was sort of semi-replaced by Chris Heck, uh, but not, and so he, they, he resigned and what have you. Uh, he was in the away end at Chelsea oh, right. yesterday. Um, I saw a tweet going, Perslow's in the away end, going, surely not. And then all of a sudden the videos start to come out and the people are having selfies, selfies with him. And there's a we we had a we had a song at the back end of last year where it goes, Christian Perslow went to Spain in a Lamborghini and he brought back Unai Emery. And there's a video of everyone singing it, and he's joining in, go, singing, <laughs> singing his own song, and it's just brilliant. Nice. Um but it's just nice because he's not involved in the club anymore. You know, clearly the club has somehow somehow means something. St- still cares, yeah. Yeah, you know, and we genuinely wouldn't be where we are now without him. Um, so uh, I thought that was quite nice. Yeah, um, and it's just we've got similar with. Sorry. Yeah, it's like there's a video of Tom Wagner in the uh, at Preston. So it's just funny to see yeah. the CEO just in the limbs, you know. Oh, absolutely, yeah, and it's yeah, it's nice to see. Like, I'm glad it's something they don't do all the time, but it is nice to see yeah. every now and again, you know. Yeah, 100%. Um, more in the ranty section. Our home shirt this year, Dan, is an absolute effing disaster. How so? Um, How so? Not in terms of the design of the shirt. People, you know, even like the shirts we're wearing today, I love it. Someone else will hate it. That's just the mm. way design is. But the actual quality of our, at least the home shirt, is an absolute disaster. And it's an embarrassment to the club, really. And the club probably do feel really embarrassed. And I hope Castor feel really embarrassed as well. Because after about 10 minutes of playing, the players look like they've been done the ice bucket challenge from 2014. <laughs> they are just drenched. The shirts are completely soaked and all sticking to them. Uh, against Legia Warsaw, John Duran went through three shirts in 60 minutes. Wow. So what? I, what? It so keeps I've, changing. So I've I, I've been noticing this. Well, we've all been noticing it since pre-season that the shirts have been getting just the players look like they're, they're 
they're in a bath. Um, but obviously they're changing the shirts at half time. So every player, all the outfield players in the home shirt are all going through two shirts a game. <laughs> And then John Duran, the one got ripped at Legia Warsaw. And so he had, went through three shirts in that in 60 minutes. Um, okay. But there's a clearly, I mean, obviously at the, cl- the clubs, when they, you know, the reason you, they change the shirts every year, you know, you, you're marketing the club. You know, it's a good thing, you know, and you want your shirts to look high quality. Clearly they don't look like that. And so the, the, there is a fundamental problem with, you know, whether they made the shirt on the cheap, or whether there's a problem with the manufacturing methods, I don't know. Uh, Is this your know. first year with Castor? No, second right. year of apparently right. like a very long, like five or six year deal. Mm. Um, yeah, it's really bizarre because we never had these problems last year. None of the other Castor. Um, no, because Islander, Republic yeah. Islander, uh, Castor. N- no one else has these problems. It's um it's funny though because obviously our castor shirts are more expensive than any other castor shirt in the premier league they're 10 pounds right. more expensive than wolves and newcastle which is annoying in itself yeah. but you're not actually getting your money money's worth for it um, no of course yeah. r- really you know i don't think anyone would be mad if the club just when it started using last year's home shirt with the new logo, just went back to the old badge because that's going to change again anyway. Just slap the new sponsor on the front of it. I don't care if they use the old shirt or whatever because there's there's clearly a problem there. Yeah, that's very so, that is very unusual. Very unusual. Bizarre. Sort it out, Castor. Yeah, sort it out. But I did buy the new island kit which you made because it's oh, very nice. It is. Uh, it is uh, so probably nice, that island on kit. a podcast like some of our old, my old blues kits, like my very my very first ones are so small that when we do like what we're wearing, obviously I can't wear it, but <laughs> I might hold it up and I might wear my island shirt instead yeah. just because it's so nice. I might give it a little uh, a little airing, but yeah, no, fair enough. Um. Shall we look ahead to the bumper week of fixtures again? Yeah, absolutely. Have you got a double game week as well? Because we, we do. We're in League Cup action on oh, course, Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I don't sure. think it's on television. I'd be highly surprised if our encounter with Everton is one of the two. <laughs> yes. Everyone's um, desperate to do that. Um, yeah. Who have you got in the league first? Are you playing? No, no, we got, uh, no, no. So we're playing in. Oh, two sorry. Days. Oh, so you're playing. Yeah. Oh, got you, got you. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, my bad. Um, because our our midweek game is a week, like next week. So That's why I got confused. Um. So yeah, we have got Everton. I expect will be heavily rotated because, um, we've got um Brighton on Saturday, um, and then okay. we're in Europe again, on th- on the following Thursday. So. Oh wow. Um, I, I would expect it to be a good opportunity. This is the game where I expected lots of changes, where I'd expect a Callum Chambers and a Clement Longley to, to have started. So um, I don't know how many changes he'll make. I presume Robin Olsen will probably play. Um, he'd be the one that I would definitely expect. I expect Leon Bailey will probably start as well and probably John Duran. Um, is, um, is it at home, the game? It is, yeah. The ticket prices are very expensive, so I'm not going. Um, um, we're talking like 40 quid. For the third That's round of the wild, League Cup. Wild, absolutely wild. Like, I mean, a big advocate for the League Cup. Put respect yeah. on the name of the League Cup. Love the League Cup. Yeah, don't bin it off. FA. If the FA are watching, don't bin off the League Cup. We're big fans. Keep, but, keep the two-legged semi-finals. Keep the two-legged semi-finals. Finals. We'll do it. Keep the two-legged semi-finals. It's way better than a Wembley semi-final. Yeah. Always has been. But we can maybe do a separate podcast on yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so then, but then you st- slap a stupid price on it and make loads of changes anyway. So. Uh, and the early rounds of the League Cup have always traditionally been the ones where they're more family atmosphere. It's the ones where yeah. parents take their kids to their first game in the League Cup second round, mm. and so don't make it really expensive. You don't need to. You can sell the stadium out. You don't need the yeah. money. Also, as well, because it's. I mean, Everton will probably rotate as well. Yeah. So you'll probably be favourites. Yeah, but they desperately need to win. Although they did win at the they won at the weekend, weekend but so they do. They are pressure. poor. I'm not. I'm not convinced by them at all. I think. Um, 
but if you can get, you'd think you can get a full house in and get a good atmosphere and get a win. Yeah. Be really beneficial. Um, is what it is. Do you have a prediction? Um, it's hard to say because I don't know how. I, I would imagine Everton will probably go quite strong, and I think we'll weaken okay. up. Um, but I, I'll say we'll win on penalties. Oh, okay. It'll no extra straight... time as well anymore, of course. Yeah, which which I I I'm a fan of for the early rounds. I, I wasn't a huge I wasn't a huge fan of it, but then um, we uh, played Cardiff in the League Cup. Um, a few weeks ago, and I was like at work the next morning, and I was like, "Please, <laughs> like, I'm so glad there's no chance this is going to go to extra time." <laughs> well, I, I was, I was at our League Cup third or fourth round game away at Chelsea a couple of years ago, and we drew one one, and that went straight to penalties, and that was, I mean, we lost on penalties, but it was yeah. great. It was like it was, it's one of my favourite away days, and I love a penalty shootout, despite how the heart palpitations. Uh, I have never been to a game, a Blues game with a penalty shootout ever. Yeah, the I only, like, yeah, the only penalty shootout I've ever been to a game. Weirdly, I went to the West Brom Villa. Oh yeah, playoff semi final second yeah, leg a few were... years ago. It's weird. You and like all our baggies for our, my Villa friends and my baggies fans were all chatting yeah. it, and I was the only person who went yeah. to the game. <laughs> it was really strange. Like the Blues fan got lucky. Had a mate who had a spare ticket. Um, yes, yeah, only penalty shootout I've ever seen uh, live in a game. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, we are back in action on Saturday, though. Uh, we're away at Norwich. And you're um, going. I'm going, yeah. My first away game of the season. Never been to Carrow Road. Um, so it should be fun because it's I'm, I mean, I'm work on Friday. I'm really excited for you. I reckon really? that'll be a class away day. Yeah. It should be good, yeah. Have you ever been? You ever been? No, no. Um, but it's I'm in work on Thursday, Friday. Then nice four or five hour drive to Norwich on Saturday, go to the game, come straight back, back in work at 6am on Sunday. So it's going to be a Proper. fast and furious weekend. Um, but yeah, couldn't say no. Um, they started the season really well, but then they got absolutely pumped by Plymouth at the weekend. Um, was it 5-2 or 6-2? Oh, and, yeah, 6-1 or something, yeah. And uh, Dan Scar, who used to play for Blues and actually grew up in Bromsgrove, uh, scored as well. So I thought that was quite interesting. Nice little uh, bit of trivia. Um, so that gives me a bit of hope. Maybe they're there for the taking. Uh, Dembele's came back uh, off the bench against um, QPR, so he should be fit. Uh, Buchanan's obviously back from suspension now from uh, since the last game. Doesn't look like Laird is going to be back yet, so that's disappointing. I'm hoping Sunjic, though, had a rest and he can go back in as well. So it should be nearer to full strength, I think. Um Jukovic's obviously back from injury, uh, back from suspension as well now. Uh, after the QPR, QPR was his first game back. So yeah, kind of hopeful. Um, uh, but I think if we got a draw, that'd be a terrific result. They are going to be. I think. Um, I think they will get. They will be decent this year. Norwich. I don't think they'll go up, but they will be. They'll be top half for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So draw will be a good result. We are also playing on Saturday. But yeah. we are the early kickoff, the half twelve um, kickoff against, oh. Bri- against Brighton, which should be an absolutely cracking game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, two two teams that are relatively in form, having they're, they're probably in collectively they're in their best form of for a long, long time. If not, um, ever. this, this is I mean this is probably the best Brighton team we've ever seen, yeah. um, and we're the best we've been in over ten years. So. Um, yeah, two teams that play in, in Europe in the coming on the coming Thursday as well. So both teams that lost 3-2 in their opening European games as well. Um, yeah, I think it'd be a really exciting game. It'd be really close. We did the double over Brighton last year, and it was Emery de Zerbi for both of those games as well. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think it could be a really, really good game. And is it it's at Villa? It is, yeah. Um, I I'm not going. I probably should have got got a ticket for it, really, but um, I, unfortunately, I'm not going. Um, but I am going to the Conference League on Thursday, so it's it's a lot. Yeah, it's quite expensive for me to get to get up to Birmingham these oh, days, so I couldn't I, be going. I know, a few I know which one I'd pick as well. I'd yeah. I'd definitely be picking the European game for sure if I could only pick one. Yeah, I Very do good. love the early um, kickoff though. So yeah. 
because similar to the Friday night thing, it can really start your weekend off in style if it, if it goes well. Yeah. It's like a full house and everything. Nice. Um, very good. Feeling confident or? Yeah, I, I back us at Villa Park against against anybody. I think pretty much. Um, nice. I think it'd be close. I, th- I think it could be another two one close knit sort of game. So. Nice. I um I really like what they're doing. Brighton deserve a brilliant, absolutely brilliant manager. Um. Loved seeing them beat Man United last week. That was fantastic. <laughs> um, wicked. So we should have done that before the Blues game then, because that would have been chronological. My bad. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, of course. Um, and then just briefly, we've also got next. I think it's next Tuesday. Um, we'll probably record another podcast before then, but we probably won't get it out in time. So I'll just mention it briefly. Yeah. Um, we've got Huddersfield at home at St Andrews, who That's have just on Neil Sky Warnock, as well. Yeah. I think isn't it? Uh, I don't think so. It might be on the red button. I don't know if it's on Sky. Yeah, I think it's on Sky. I think I checked earlier. Oh, oh maybe it is. Maybe it is. Um, but yeah, um, Neil Warnock's just left there. I, God knows why. Like, very strange, whatever's going on in his career. But Darren Moore's gone in. As we're recording, I yeah. think they're losing to Coventry at the minute, Huddersfield. Um, so we should probably beat them at home. But obviously I said that about QPR and we didn't. If we got four points somehow from Norwich and Huddersfield, perfect. That'd be absolutely fantastic. And you, you've obviously got to be careful of that new new manager sort of bounce. Former yeah, West Darren Brom Moore, manager yeah. as well. Yeah, Darren Moore's gone there, who's a good manager. Did really well to get Sheffield Wednesday up last season and probably shouldn't have been probably shouldn't have been made to leave Sheffield Wednesday as well. But here he is anyway. Yeah. Cool. Should we um should we wrap it up there? Yeah, just confirming that game is on Sky Sports Football, not uh, it might be on the red button, it is on Tally. Oh no, it's cool. I'll be going anyway because I'm a yeah. diehard fan. Cool. Um, so if you have enjoyed today's podcast, uh, please do subscribe on whichever podcasting platform you're listening on and feel free to check out our previous episodes. We did a special on Alex McLeish and his time at both clubs in the Second City recently, which we'd fully recommend. And even if some of the stuff has probably dated a little bit, go and watch it and just see what shirts we're wearing on that day because yeah, we wear a different shirt every week. You'll see the collection yeah. as, as we get I... through it. I had before this one. I did make a list of like ones I have worn because I had, I'd forgotten which ones I wore. So this we did loads of re- we did loads of rehearsal episodes like yeah. earlier this year, and I was like, I swear I've worn that shirt, and it turns out I was wearing. But like, I was like, I won't wear that one. I've worn it, but I'd mixed up which ones I've worn on episodes <laughs> we'd have. Like we didn't edit and post and stuff. Um, so yes, so I'm very organised now. Yeah. So go and see what shirts we're wearing. Um, Leave us a five star review while you're at it. Subscribe on um, YouTube. Yeah, and you can also follow us on Twitter, uh, also known as X, and TikTok. Yeah, the TikToks have been doing really well, actually. Um, mm. Out of the thing we've posted, four. Yeah, they're doing quite well. So go and follow us on TikTok and like the videos, watch them. They're nice little clips from the podcast. Um, something I was going to say as well is if you are listening on audio, go check the YouTube video out because. Yep. And vice versa, because Dan edits one and I edit the other. So they yes. aren't identical. There are some no, slight differences but, between the two. Yeah, they're different like me. It's the same. We do coordinate, obviously, but they're, yeah. they're two different mediums in it. Some things don't work in one that work in the other and so on. So we do have to edit them uh, differently. So go and check them out. Uh, you can find us on all of our social links with the handle at Second City Pod. That's at Second City Pod. So at 2ND City Pod. And as always, you can find everything in our link tree, uh, which is uh, linked dot uh, linktr.ee slash two nd city pod. Beautiful, um, nice one, Carl. Until next week, then. Yeah, until next week. Uh, I'll see you then, Dan. Up the villa. Nice one. Up the blues, and uh, I'll let you know how Norwich goes next week. Yes. Oh, I, we want the full in-depth review of what Norwich is like. No problem. I look forward to it. It'll be a travel vlog as well as a match day vlog. Nice one. See you around, dude. See you later.